Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Spartan Center here on LCAT. I'm Colin Casey, joined by Patrick Varhu and Matt Rodolakis. Uh, we begin now with the MLB playoffs starting this week, the AL wild card game taking place on Tuesday night between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, very, very entertaining game, guys. It was 2-2 going into extra innings, and then all of a sudden a, wa a walk-off three-run home run by Edwin Encarnacion ended the game. However, the pitcher that was in the game for the Orioles was not the one we were expecting, Matt. Yeah, they had Yvaldo Jimenez in, in the single most important game of the season. With second and third, less than two outs, and Edwin Encarnacion at the plate. I don't understand the reasoning for that at all. I guess uh, Buck Showalter, the Orioles manager, was trying to save Britain for when they had a lead and they could bring him in to get the save. But, I mean, you, when you're on the road, you can never guarantee that you'll ever get the lead in extra innings. So I think he should have used him in the ninth or the tenth. Yeah, Zach Britton has a sub-1 ERA. He also had 40-plus saves without blowing a single one of them. 47. Yeah, 47, 47 saves. And then you go and pitch Ubaldo Jimenez because he's been hot at the end of the year. I just don't understand it. Pat, your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. The Blue Jays have, like, one of the best lineups in uh, Major League Baseball, especially with Encarnacion, Donaldson. They're two power hitters. I'd start Britton, or not start Britton. I'd pitch Britton, like, every game. I don't care if he's tired. I'd pitch Britton. Ubaldo Jimenez is just not that great of a pitcher, and I would definitely go with Britton every time. Now, do you guys think that uh, anything, or if, should they have had uh, Zach, or not Zach Britton, uh, Chris Tillman out there longer, do you think that might have changed his de decision if uh, Chris Tillman went, say, seven or eight innings? I think if he had gone a little bit longer, he might have stretched his earlier relievers out a little bit more, like uh, Brock and O'Day, but they didn't pitch a whole lot so I think that definitely influences the decision on not using Britain. Yeah Brock and O'Day did a very solid job out of the bullpen. Those two guys were proven relievers. Exactly. They, it would have made sense to bring them in at the time but Pat instead they go on and bring in uh, uh, Uvaldo Jimenez in the biggest inning of the season. Yeah it just doesn't make sense like keep O'Day in an inning longer keep Brock and why are you pitching Uvaldo Jimenez? All right let's get on to the uh, second wild card game the NL wild card game taking place last night. The uh, San Francisco Giants were in New York to take on the Mets. Uh, the final score was 3 nothing, and another big three-run home run. This one for the Giants as Madison Bumgarner pitching a complete game shutout, I believe, only giving up four hits. Uh, he certainly looked like the Madison Bumgarner we know well when it comes to the postseason. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't surprise us anymore, but for me, it was still surprising just to see him go out there and just dominate that lineup. It was very impressive. Yeah, and then you look at the Giants who have won the last three even-numbered year World Series in 2010, 2012, and 2014. Uh, Madison Bumgarner, the last one, of course, pitching just amazing. He had, uh, I think now his career is like something like uh, his ERA is somewhere below one. It's just ridiculous. Uh, Pat, your thoughts on the Giants winning last night? Uh, I think it proves that Madison Bumgarner is possibly the best postseason pitcher in Major League history, definitely from recent memory. I don't, I can't remember a guy in our lifetime who has been better in the postseason than Madison Bumgarner. And the craziest thing about this is you're looking at a guy who hasn't even like been in the middle of his prime, in, in the middle of his prime yet. He is still a young guy, and he could be doing this for years to come for the San Francisco Giants. Uh, we now turn our heads towards the Red Sox. They play their first game of the ALDS tonight in Cleveland. Uh, the Red Sox have Rick Porcello starting on the mound. And, guys, I don't think anyone thought Rick Porcello would be the game one starter in a playoff series for the Red Sox last April. No, the beginning of the season, I wouldn't have even thought of Rick Porcello as a top three guy in their rotation. Uh, so I'm pretty surprised that we're seeing – well, I'm not surprised from what we've seen this – I'm surprised what we saw this season – but I'm not surprised that he is the game one starter because I would have started uh, Rick Porcello even though David Price is getting paid the big bucks. And then he's finished this year with 22 and four as a record. Very impressive. Uh, and then on the other side, we have uh, Trevor Bauer for the Indians. And he has had his fair, sh shares of, his fair share of struggles against the Red Sox, Matt. Bauer's a solid pitcher. He's got a good amount of upside. He hasn't really shown it yet in his career, but he's a guy who's got a couple of good pitches. Good hard fastball, good curveball, some sharp bite. But he tends to get hit around a lot, and the Sox are a lineup that can hit guys around. Yeah, like you said, Red Sox, very solid lineup. And if you look at the Red Sox lineup, Pat, anyone on that team can hurt you at any time. Throughout the lineup, you see Mookie Betts, you see Pedroia, you see Ortiz, 
go all the way through, even Sandy Leone, who's is like the surprise catcher this year. They can all hurt you in many ways. I don't care if Sandy Leone hasn't done well at the end of the season. He started off great, which was shocking, and I think every Sox fan just loves Sandy Leone. He could not get hit the rest of the playoffs. Everyone's going to love what Sandy Leone did for the <laughs> yeah. Sox this year. And then that contract, of course, I think they have him locked up for the next three years or so for a very low price. Should he continue to play like he did at the beginning at least, or in the middle of this season, then that would be a huge steal for the Red Sox. Uh, a possible concern for the Red Sox, though, is Craig Kimbrell. He had his struggles down the stretch. How do you guys feel about Kimbrell going into the postseason? I don't really feel too worried. I mean, the bullpen was historically good throughout September, and then, then just the very last couple of games, Kimbrell got a little shaky there, and that's concerning, yeah, but I think he just needed a little bit of time off to refocus himself, throw some side sessions and bullpens, and I think we're going to see a much better, much more focused Craig Kimbrell on the mound in Cleveland. And like and Pat, like Matt mentioned, he's got the help he needs. He's got guys like Koji Uhara, Matt Barnes, uh, Heath Hembree that have pitched pretty well this season. Yeah, I agree. I think if John Farrell can keep uh, Craig Kimbrell to a ninth inning role, then I think he'll be fine. It's whenever John Farrell decides to throw him in in the eighth inning, something seems to go wrong, or like a non-traditional save situation. So if the Sox can have a two-run lead, bottom of the ninth inning, tossing Kimbrell, I'm not worried at all. The argument that Koji Uehara should be the closer is ridiculous. Uh, I don't understand it. Koji Uehara is a washed-up old pitcher who is good in the eighth inning, but I would not close a game with him. Yeah, he's a guy that's not going to overpower people with a fastball, of mm -hmm. course. His primary pitch is a splitter, and that's not really the type of guy you kind of want to close out games in the bottom of the ninth or the top of the ninth, for that matter. Uh, we can now look at the series itself. Who wins game one tonight, and who goes on to win the series? Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, from the last couple of postseasons we've seen from the Sox, they have a tendency to just get off to really hot starts, and they really hit the ball well in game one. So I'm going to give game one to the Sox. I think they're going to rough Bauer up, put some runs on him for sure, and I think they're going to win the series in four, maybe five games. Pat, your thoughts? I definitely think the Sox win tonight, and I think, I think they might sweep Cleveland. I don't look at Cleveland's rotation right now because of Carrasco and Salazar. I don't look at their rotation in a positive way. I think they have actually one of the bottom half rotation in the American League without their three aces because they don't have do they have Kluber back? They have Kluber back, but he is still feeling the effects from his hamstring injury, and I believe they have Carrasco back, but Salazar is not even on the roster yeah. for the ALDS. So without their, I think Salazar is the number one guy, and then Carrasco yeah. and Kluber, who are, the three of them are... Kluber did have a great year. He did, but if he's still feeling the effects of the hamstring I know, I know. injury, I'm just I just like, do yeah. not know how they can go on to win. When, if you have Trevor Bauer as your game one starter, you know there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to pick the Red Sox in tonight and in the series. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if David Ortiz goes on one last tear in the postseason starting this series. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes and hits 500 in the series. He's done it before in postseason games. And the Red Sox in the ALDS have proven to be very dominant over the past 10 years or so with Ortiz in the lineup. I, I'm almost thinking that Ortiz is not going to have a good series, not going to have a good ALCS, and I think he's going to turn it on the World Series. I think that's very David Ortiz fashion to just – turn it on when it really matters. People are doubting you. Oh, he's not going to have a great final season. He had a great final season. Oh, he's not going to have a great World Series. He hasn't been hitting well in the playoffs. He's going to go. I think David Ortiz is going to be pretty cold. Maybe just average. Maybe he'll do okay. But I think the World Series, if they get there, which I think they will, he will just turn it on and be awesome. Yeah, uh, you think of Ortiz. Like The whole lineup really struggled in the first. Uh, they were solid in the series against Tampa, including Ortiz. Uh, but in game one of the uh, 2013, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm referring to, the 2013, playoffs against the uh, Tigers in the ALCS. They got no hit for a while by Anibal Sanchez. And what changed in that series for their offense was when Ortiz hit that grand slam in game two. So I'm wondering if we'll see one of those watershed moments uh, coming in this ALDS or even in the ALCS, should they make it that far. Uh, we now move to the NFL. Uh, we talked about a couple games last week. We start off with a pretty remarkable win for the Buffalo Bills. They uh, defeated the Patriots 16-0. Granted, this was the last game without Tom Brady for the Patriots. Uh, any concern for New England, Matt? Absolutely none. No concern whatsoever. I mean, Jacoby Brissett was never going to be a guy who was going to lead this team to a Super Bowl, especially not now. I mean, you could debate whether he has that potential to, but I wasn't expecting much from him. Even though I did pick them to win that game, it was more because of their defense and what they did the week before to Houston. But, I mean, getting Tom Brady back, Gronk, hopefully for the Patriots, is progressing in his recovery from whatever you, his injury was. I think that this, that they're just going to dominate the rest of the year. Yeah, and uh, Pat, uh, Matt mentioned that Brissett 
struggled. Uh, that was pretty much expected. Uh, if it was Garoppolo, would you have concern? No, because neither of them are going to be playing the rest of the year. Tom Brady does not get injured that often. He's not, I don't look at him like an injury-ridden quarterback at all. He's had one that I can really remember seven years ago. So I don't think uh, there's anything to worry with on the Patriots because Tom Brady's the quarterback and things don't go bad for the Patriots when Tom Brady is the quarterback. Uh, the Patriots did have their fair share of struggles uh, last week. Speaking of struggles, the uh, Carolina Panthers and Arizona Cardinals, two teams that played in the NFC Championship last year, they've all been off to slow starts, one and three. Uh, Panthers losing this week to the Falcons on a great game from Matt Ryan. Uh, Matt, your thoughts on the Panthers so far this season? Very disappointing, to put it lightly. Uh, I think the offense has more or less been there. I think that Cam Newton is playing very well for the most part, and I think their biggest problem lies in the defense. I think losing Josh Norman hurt them a lot, and I don't think anyone really expected it to hurt them this much, but they've been put, giving up a lot of points. And you think about uh, like certain plays in each game. You go back to week one, that missed field goal by Graham Gano, they beat two and two, and we might be talking a different story, maybe have a more positive outlook on the Panthers. Uh, Pat, your thoughts on the Panthers losing the Falcons last week? Uh, I thought it was pretty pathetic. Uh, I don't know. Cam Newton got a concussion at the end of the game, so if he could be out for a while. Panthers are not in a good spot. I don't know what's going wrong with them. Obviously, losing Josh Norman was terrible for them, but I mean, he's gone to the Redskins and he hasn't done anything great, so I don't know. Maybe Josh Norman wouldn't have helped them that much. I think Josh Norman had a great season last year, and it's going to be interesting to see if he can continue that away from the Panthers. But maybe everyone's saying it's a terrible decision. They didn't bring him back. Maybe it isn't. Maybe they just need someone else that isn't Josh Norman. Maybe now they'll have the funds to go and get someone else. I do think this year the Panthers are in a, some trouble defensively. Okay, and then also you look at the Cardinals, who also, in similarities to the, uh, to the Panthers, Carson Palmer now injured, so they're going to have to go to a backup quarterback. Granted, I think uh, Newton's injury might be a little less severe, so the Cardinals are, have a real big problem on their hands. Yeah, Drew Stanton, the quarterback, definitely is not ideal, especially for a team that is one and three. Uh, the Cardinals have been just disappointing this year. The offense looks just out of sync. He's not hitting his receivers like he used to. And, I mean, David Johnson had sustained an injury in the last game. He came back, but still, he's a little banged up, and that's not going to help matters. And then uh, you look at Matt Ryan for the Atlanta Falcons. What a game he had last week, along with Julio Jones. Julio Jones, 300 receiving yards, but Matt Ryan, over 500 passing yards. He leads almost every quarterback statistic so far this year. Congratulations. We're, we're going to begin with Pat, who has a, quite the hatred towards Matt Ryan. What are your thoughts on Matt Ryan's start to this season? Matt Ryan has had a great start to this season. Congrats, Matt. You deserve it. Not really. You're not that good of a quarterback. You do not have a receiver go out and get 300 yards if you one, isn't something on the defense's fault, and two, if the receiver doesn't go out and do something awesome. Matt Ryan didn't have Julio Jones. Matt, we wouldn't even be talking about Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan would be a bottom-of-the-road quarterback. The Falcons would be, I don't know, 0-4 maybe. It's all Julio Jones is doing offensively, and the fact that they're not playing great defenses, especially in the NFC South, because the Panthers' defense stinks now without Norman. Saints' defense stinks, and the Buccaneers... I don't think they've played the Buccaneers yet, so we don't have to talk about the Buccaneers. Well, Matt, you, got, you, can't under, you can't deny the cold hard facts that Matt Ryan is playing, is off to probably the best start of a se season that he's ever had, or at least the best one since 2012. Uh, I think we're seeing a resurgence from Matt Ryan. We are not seeing a resurgence from Matt Ryan. He has a great offensive line. You look at Matthews, he was a first rounder last year. We look at Alex Mack, who they got from the Browns. He's a great center. He has a great offensive line. He has Julio Jones, who's a great receiver. Devontae Freeman has been a crappy running back this year, but last year he was great. So there's still like the, the stigma that goes around with Devontae Freeman being some kind of great running back, which he's not. He only has one playoff win in eight years. Everyone treats Matt Ryan like he's a top of the line quarterback. He's won one playoff game in eight years. Matt, your thoughts on I this? I think that I just want to make this observation that even if you took out everything that he did with Julio last week, Matt Ryan still passed for 203 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, I think he was like, he would have been like 19 for 23 on completions. His complete, like that. completion percentage was great in that game. Because you have to devote your attention now to Julio Jones. They were double teaming him by the end of the game. 
It, the thing is, it's like you have one receiver, so that makes the defense have to focus on another receiver. And when you take out a weapon like that, it makes the rest of the team worse and would definitely make Matt Ryan bring him down to the real level he's at. Isn't it the mark of a good quarterback that when the team takes away his first option, he's then able to use his other receivers like Muhammad Sanu no, it effectively? Isn't. How? Anyone, any quarterback could do that. If, if everyone on the, the – say last week, we go to the Bills. If every single – person, every single defender was covering, I know Gronk didn't do anything last week, but just say Gronk was being Gronk. If everyone was covering Gronk, Jacoby Brissett could make complete passes to Edelman, Amendola, all those guys. It's not that hard. If you just go to a crappy wide receiver from a crappy quarterback, it's not that hard because the defense is going to be focusing on the star who is Julio Jones. Julio Jones is probably the best receiver in the NFL up there with Antonio, second best. But what, if you, had, what if you have a guy, like a guy who can't throw the ball down the field, obviously this defense is going to press coverage. And you can have those one-on-one -on -one matchups. If, if, you, if your guy can't throw it down the field, then what's the point? Obviously, Matt Ryan can throw. I mean, he's not a paraplegic. The guy can do it. He's, he can throw. He has an arm. He can throw it down the field. Congrats. He's in the NFL. He can throw the football. It, it's not that hard to do when you have great weapons around you, which he does. So you're not impressed at all by this performance? Uh, no, I'm not. Really? 500 yards isn't enough for you? No, it isn't. And you're saying that he played absolutely no part in Julio Jones having a 300 receiving yards. Well, he's the quarterback. He obviously played a part, but Julio Jones made the Falcons' offense great. It was not Matt Ryan who made this Falcons' offense great last week. That's, I think that's up for debate. I mean, Julio had a great game, but somebody has to get him the ball. Yeah, but he threw it short. I remember one pass. He throws it short right up the middle. Jones goes to the sideline and breaks a bunch of tackles all the way down the field. Well, didn't break tackles. He Swerved throughout guys, broke a couple tackles, and got all the way down the field. What did Matt Ryan do for that play? He tossed an easy pass across the middle. I could do that. It's not that hard. Threw a couple of bombs, too, that he connected with Julio on. Congratulations! They're Julio Jones players. is a great receiver. And he also threw for 200 yards and three touchdowns without him, which so, is an impressive stat line on its own. So did tons of other quarterbacks in the NFL last week. 200 yards isn't and, that many. Yeah, but 200 yards and three touchdowns against the Panthers' defense is pretty good. That's very good. I mean, the Panthers' de defense hasn't been what it was last year, but... I mean, it's not a complete mess. They still have one of the best defensive players in the league, Luke Keekley on that team. They got Kawan Short, Coney Ealy, uh, Thomas Davis Sr. That's a great team. That's fine. They're not playing great right now, but that's a lot of talent. Exactly. You know what? We'll see. Coming up, Matt Ryan has Denver. I don't know if it's this week. It might this be week. This, this week. week. And then he has another. I think it's Seattle the next week. If Matt Ryan can throw for over uh, 250 yards the next two weeks with a couple touchdowns and not a lot of picks, because last year he threw 21 touchdowns and had 16 picks. That's not that great, if you ask me. Uh, I think we'll, if he can do that, then I'll, I'll uh, give Matt Ryan a little bit. My credit. issue with this is that even, like, he refused to acknowledge that he's even improved. He doesn't need to improve. He has Julio Jones. It, it, it doesn't matter. He's improved. He had Julio Jones last year. Oh, yeah, oh, so he's improved from being terrible to being okay. Well, maybe not even okay. We don't know. We don't know what he's been. Yeah, we, I think we do. I think that's pretty clear cut what he's we're, been. He's been the best quarterback in the NFL so far this season. Okay. We're, we're going to move on now. This, this story will definitely be continued definitely. for weeks to come. Uh, another big uh, game in the NFL last week was Monday night. The uh, Minnesota Vikings continued to stay undefeated after defeating the Giants last week. Uh, Giants looked pretty lost in that game. How? Give a lot of credit to Xavier Rhodes for shutting down Odell Beckham Jr. in that game, limited him to a couple of catches. Uh, more importantly, the Giants are having some off-the-field issues with Odell Beckham Jr. Matt, is there any reason to be concerned? Definitely. I mean, he came out and he said to the media, he said, uh, I'm not really enjoying football anymore. I'm not having fun, and that's, that's huge. I mean, you look at all the best players in the game, the Cam Newtons, the Julio Joneses, the Antonio Browns, you see them dancing in the end zone, they're having fun. That's how, he, that's how you get the best performances. And if Odell's not having fun, then he's, you, you can see it in the way he's playing. Pat, yeah, you got to agree with that. Uh, I agree. Odell Beckham Jr. is just, he's a jerk. He's very conceited. He doesn't like now that they have Sterling Shepard. Last year, he was their only target. Who else were they going to, only great target. This year, there's three other guys. It's not the Odell, Odell show anymore. Victor Cruz is back. They have Shepard. Now that it's not the Odell show, eh, Odell, oh, I'm not having fun anymore. Okay, you know what? If you're not, quit football, go away, stop. If you're not having fun, I don't really care. So I, I, at first, when I saw this, I didn't think it was a big deal. I think it really began last week after the Norman game. But now, with this story really building steam, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about 
how Odell Beckham Jr. and Ben McAdoo and Eli Manning together are going to get along. It seems like there's a bit of a strain on that relationship, and hopefully they'll be able to correct that before things get ugly this season. Uh, now we go to a list here of a top. We did la top five quarterbacks last week. It actually got cut out of this because of a technical difficulty. But top five running backs in the NFL. Uh, we'll start with all of our number fives. I'll go first. We'll go with. I, I went with Ezekiel Elliott, uh, rookie running back, rookie of the year candidate as well. Uh, he had a rough first game against the Gi Giants. So you can consider it rough. He still had 50 yards and a touchdown. But I really like what I've seen from Ezekiel Elliott. It was a good draft pick by the Cowboys and. He certainly could be one of the best running backs uh, to play the game by the end of his career. Uh, at my number five, I went with Jamal Charles. He's been a guy who's been injured a lot over the past couple seasons, but when he plays, he is a, a top running back. The guy can just break free, go deep. He, a lot of guys, you know, they're good. They get a lot of short yardage games, but he can just break free. He's a great running back, so I have him at my number five for the Chiefs. I like Colin Whitman with Ezekiel Elliott. I think he has the most rushing yards in the NFL so far, and he's just been amazing. I mean, you can credit a good, a good amount of that to the fantastic Cowboys offensive O-line, but I think Ezekiel Elliott is a, Elliott is a very talented player, and we're going to be seeing a lot of him. Um, number four, I went with Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, not the same start that he had last season. Uh, I, I think you can attribute it to Jared Goff not being a quarterback. I feel like if Jared Goff was a quarterback, teams would be worrying more about the quarterback on the play, throwing the ball down the field. But you look at a guy like Case Keenum starting for the Rams, that name doesn't scare defenses. Uh, Todd Gurley, phenomenal rookie season last year. Uh, once the Rams uh, and Jeff Fisher understand that Jared Goff is the answer, uh, one, once he's in at quarterback, I think that Gurley will become just as valuable as he was last season. Uh, I, I don't have Gurley on my list just because of the rough start he's had to this season. Maybe if Goff does become the quarterback, I would put him on my list. But at four, I have AP, another guy who's not playing right now. But uh, I, he didn't have a great start to the season either, but that was kind of because they were still trying to mold into the offense that the Vikings were getting. They lost Bridgewater, who was supposed to be their franchise quarterback. And then they had uh, Hill, and now they have Bradford. So it was still kind of getting molded back then. So I think AP is a top rusher and fourth in the league. I went with Gurley, like Colin, and I think there's a lot, he has a lot left in the tank for this season and for the rest of his career, and I think he'll bounce back eventually. It's just a matter of time. Uh, number three, I went with Le'Veon Bell coming off of his three-game suspension to start the season. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, his last season ended in injury for him, but that doesn't mean he's going to come back and not be the same Le'Veon Bell. He was one of, if not the best running back in the league at the point of his injury last year. And I think that he can come back to that level and make the Steelers' offense even better than it already is. Pat, who's your number three? I have Le'Veon Bell at number three. I would probably have him at number one if he didn't get injured or get suspended, like, every five minutes. Like, you can't, it seems like you can't watch two weeks without the guy, oh, he's in for two weeks, oh, back to D'Angelo Williams. It, it just doesn't work. I, I was considering putting D'Angelo Williams on this top five list. He doesn't play a lot, but when he does, he's great. But, uh... Le'Veon Bell, number three. I think it's in actually, I think it's interesting to see that Williams does so well with the Steelers because he wasn't he's played better with the Steelers than he did when he was with Carolina. So maybe now that he's with the Steelers, maybe they just have a good rushing system there. They, so I like Le'Veon Bell. He's obviously a great running back. I'd like to see what Le'Veon Bell could do somewhere else or if he could last when he's not injured getting suspended. I went with Adrian Peterson at the three, and I think... He's, been, he's had a rough start to the season, and now he's gotten hurt. Another big injury for him with the ACL tear a few years ago. But I think he's still, at the end of the day, he's still Adrian Peterson. And similar to Gurley, I think he's going to, once he comes back, whenever that is, I think eventually he'll figure it out again, and he'll go back to putting up big numbers. Yeah, I actually had AP at number two uh, on my list. Some may see it as a little bit high, but I still believe in Adrian Peterson. I think that looking at last season, he was unreal last season, just like he was a couple of years before when he was really young and talented. He still obviously is talented, but he's getting up there in age. I wouldn't be that concerned, even though running backs have the trend to kind of tail off once they get into their 30s. Um, Adrian Peterson, if he wasn't injured, the way the Vikings offense has been running this season with Matt Asiata and Jarek McKinnon, they've been running the ball great. Uh, I would say that he would be in the top three, at least, in rushing yards. That's why he is number two on my list. 
Uh, I have Marshawn Lynch. Just kidding. It's uh, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, the rookie from, uh, see, tricked you. Uh, the rookie in uh, Dallas. I think he's had a great start to the season, and I think he can progress into being a player like Adrian Peterson in his career. He might be one of the best running backs of all time. He's having a great rookie season, and uh, I think he has a lot of promise, even more than the guy I have at number one that we'll talk about after. At number two, I went with Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I know he only played one game, but he was the same Le'Veon Bell we were accustomed to seeing in that game. And I think before the end of the season, he will be the consensus number one running back in the league. I think his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield is unparalleled in the NFL. And he has the ability to run in between the tackles and bounce it outside. And he's just the most complete running back in the game. I think we all went with the same number one pick, David Johnson, uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I think at the beginning of the season, we thought David Johnson would be the reason that the Cardinals would be undefeated at this point in the season. However, they're one and three. He hasn't gotten the help that he deserves. He is a very talented running back. And he, he could be the number one running back in the NFL for the next five years or so, the way he's been running the football. Yeah, he just kind of a surprising guy last year. He just kind of showed up and he was great. So uh, I like what I've seen from Johnson, especially with their subpar offense so far. And I'd like to see if they really, if Carson Palmer, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Mike Floyd got going, I think uh, we'd see a lot more from Johnson and be very interesting. Johnson to me is a guy who reminds me a lot of Le'Veon Bell. And I think that's the sort of the direction that NFL running backs are moving in into that sort of, not the biggest guy, but a quick guy, a guy who's really good at catching the ball out of the backfield and a guy who can do pretty much anything you want at the running back position, similar to a guy like Deion Lewis, like the Patriots. And I think David Johnson has been fantastic this season. I think he's just supremely talented. And if Carson Palmer can ever get it going, he's going to put up some crazy numbers. Uh, speaking of the Cardinals, we're going to kick off with them to start our this week's picks. Uh, Thursday night game, Arizona Cardinals will be taking on the San Francisco 49ers. The way the Cardinals have been playing, it might be a good pick to take the 49ers. What do you guys think? I'm going with the Cardinals still. The 49ers are just horrendous. Uh, even if Stanton's the quarterback, if David Johnson's the running back, I don't think the 49ers can stop the rush. I don't think the 49ers can do anything. The 49ers stink. It, it, the Cardinals win by a lot. Cardinals. Uh, the Palmer injury is significant, of course. I mean, nobody wants to see Drew Stanton going out there as a starting quarterback for their favorite team. But at the end of the day, they still have David Johnson. And the 49ers just lost Navarro Bowman for the year again. And I think this is, a, this is a 49ers team that really can't do very many things well. I'm going with the Cardinals, too, for that, uh, all those same reasons as well. I think yeah, David Johnson can be too much to stop. But here's an interesting question you think about. With the 49ers' struggle so far this season, do you think we'll see Colin Kaepernick starting at all this season? No, just because everyone hates Colin Kaepernick. It's like, I think Colin Kaepernick's going to be a guy that this whole kneeling thing is going to end. Go maybe a season, he'll be a free agent. Some team will pick him up, kind of like they did with RG3. Maybe someone will get hurt and he'll be in, but I don't think Colin Kaepernick's going anywhere the rest of his career. I think he's kind of done. I think that we will definitely see Colin Kaepernick starting a quarterback at some point for the 49ers this season. Blaine Gabbert has not been very good, and we all saw what Kaepernick did a few years ago in the latter half of the season and into the playoffs. I think he's still got something left in him. Yeah, I think a lot of 49ers fans want to see if he's still the same Colin Kaepernick he was when they led him to the NFC Championship. We now move on to the Patriots at the Browns. Guess who's back? Tom Brady. Uh, Brady with the four-game suspension. Uh, it looks like the Patriots are the clear favorites for this game. Yeah, if the Patriots lose this game, then I don't, I, I don't know where I was going with that. The Patriots should cream them by a lot. Not even close. Maybe Gronk will have a couple touchdowns. He hasn't had any all season. Uh, I'd like to see Brady and Edelman. Connecting. I think Tom Brady is going to be back and going to be driving hard, and then you're playing freaking Browns, so that's not hard at all. Big win. Tom Brady, deep. They have a boring offense. That's a story for another time. Patriots win by a lot. The only reason this game is even on our list of good games to watch for is because Brady's coming back, and we just want to make a note of that. I mean, this should, there's no way they should win this game by less than 20. I don't expect Tom to miss a beat, and I think he'll put up some big numbers. Even if he didn't put up big numbers, I still think a, a mediocre game from him will get the job done with Definitely. the way the Browns have played this season, the only winless team in the NFL. Uh, next up, we have the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Detroit Lions. Easy, easy win for the Eagles. Carson Wentz just going to drive right down the field. The only thing with Carson Wentz is he doesn't have like a star target. Like, I don't know, he throws to Jordan Matthews. He's pretty good. So... Carson Wentz, it's going to be interesting to see 
if throughout the season he can keep it up at this elite rookie level that he's having, or that he's this elite rookie level that he's at, I don't know. Because he doesn't have like a star target, but for this game it should be a big, easy win for the Eagles. I also went with the Eagles. I mean, I love Carson Wentz. And the Lions have shown this year that even without Megatron, they can put up a lot of points. Stafford's had a pretty good year, but they have no defense, and the Eagles' defense limited the Steelers to three points. So I think their defense will definitely do enough to stop the Lions. And to what Pat said about Wentz not having a top target, I mean, that, that's true. Jordan Matthews is not a top target, but I think if you look at that offense, it's a pretty solid offense. Ryan Matthews out of the backfield along with Darren Sproles. That's a nice tandem. Matthews is a solid receiver, top half of the league in my opinion, and uh, Zach Ertz is a pretty good tight end. Yeah, you look at the Eagles, I'm going with the Eagles in this game as well. Um, they haven't had that same quarterback that has been consistently great. Uh, I, I understand it's only four games, but he looks like he might be the quarterback that can be their quarterback for the next 10 years or so. They haven't had that quarterback since Donovan McNabb. Uh, they had Mike Vick for a little bit, a couple solid seasons from him, but he really never kept it going. I think Wentz could be at the level of Donovan McNabb the, the second his career ends, or even better than that. Uh, next game we have the Redskins taking on the Ravens. Well, this is, I think, the Redskins' second biggest challenge this year following the game against the Steelers. With the way they've played the past two weeks, I'm going to go with my Redskins. I think Kirk Cousins is good. I think he can beat them. Hopefully he can beat them. Jordan Reed last week went off, which was wonderful to see if you're a Redskins fan. They have a lot of defensive injuries. This is, uh, a lot of defensive injuries. It'll be interesting to see who can come back this week. Hopefully Kerrigan's in there. Rashad Breland, who's not done great, but they kind of need him in the secondary. I also, oh, actually, no, I, I went with Baltimore. Uh, they suffered their first loss of the season last week to uh, the Raiders, a heartbreaker. But I think that they've shown me a lot this year. I think they're a pretty good team, and I think they'll do enough to get by a, as you said, injury-riddled Redskins team. I'll tell you what, this is a great matchup this week. I think this game could come down to a touchdown, and it's two pretty evenly matched quarterbacks in my mind. Uh, I'm going to go with the Redskins on this one. They've been riding some good momentum uh, at coming off back-to-back -back wins. Uh, and then you look at Matt Jones, who's ran the ball very well. Uh, I think that surprised a lot of Redskins fans, including Especially yourself. This one. Yeah, yeah. It did. I hated Matt. Uh, after really did. They, they got rid of uh, Alfred Morris, and you were wondering who they're going to give the ball to. Matt Jones has done a solid job. I think the Redskins will do just enough to squeak by in that game. Uh, next up, we have the Vikings looking to stay undefeated. They host the Houston Texans. Vikings win. Vikings defense is just wonderful. Uh, I like Houston. I like Brock Osweiler. I like DeAndre Hopkins. I like Will Fuller. I like the defense, even though they don't have J.J. Watt, but the Vikings defense is superb. Uh, I like Stephon Diggs receiving the football from Bradford. I really like the Vikings this season. I think they may be the best team in the NFL, which is shocking. I went with the Vikings, too. I don't know if I'd call them the best team in the NFL, but they've been extremely impressive. There's no doubt about that. I think the defense and even their special teams has just looked amazing so far, and they've done plenty like they've done more than enough with Sam Bradford at the QB and McKinnon and Asiata in the backfield to do it, to get it done so far. I used to have two quarterbacks in my mind that I thought were overrated quarterbacks that don't belong at least in like the a, a middle of the pack quarterback. One of them was Jay Cutler. I still think he's not great at all and I think I have good reason to at this point. The other was Sam Bradford but Sam Bradford has shown me that he really is a talented quarterback. He's obviously not one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league, but if you give him the tools, he will succeed, and that is why I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings in this game. Uh, next up, Steelers and Jets. Uh, Ryan fitzpatrick has been playing very poorly lately. Pat? I think it's going to be a pretty good game, pretty good game, pretty close game. I'm going to have to give it to the Steelers. I just, I don't even, the Jets have a pretty good defense, but I don't think they can stop Roethlisberger going all the way deep down the field to Brown. Le'Veon Bell's back. Even if, I don't know, he might get hurt in the game. He gets hurt every couple minutes. So Williams could come in. They have a great running back tandem. It's not really a tandem because it's all Bell. But if they need Williams, he's great. So I think it's going to be a good win for the Steelers. And Ryan Fitzpatrick's look terrible. They go with Geno. That's a joke. Don't go with Geno. <laughs> I also picked the Steelers. I think that getting Le'Veon back is going to do wonders for that offense, which was already one of the best in the league. And I think that this game isn't one that really needs a whole lot of explaining. Yeah, uh, I'm going with the Steelers too. And I just, 
It's, I find it hard to believe that Ryan Fitzpatrick led this team to a 10-6 and record last year, the way he's played the past couple weeks. I mean, he has just been terrible. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, given the best offense in the league with Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, uh, D'Angelo Williams, I think it's a no contest in this one. Steelers win. Uh, Falcons against the Broncos, uh, statistically the best quarterback in the league, Matt Ryan, taking on Denver Broncos defense. Pat, who do you pick in this game? I can't wait until after this game where I won't keep hearing Matt Ryan, statistically best quarterback in the NFL. Because it'll be over! Because the Denver Broncos are going to absolutely destroy the Falcons. They, Matt Ryan can't handle this Denver defense. Denver's offense isn't bad either. Should be a pretty easy win for the Broncos. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we heard almost the exact same thing out of your mouth last week when they played the Panthers. Yes, but Panthers suffered some injuries. Yeah, which okay. Which we have not seen. Whatever, I'm going with the Broncos, Broncos too. I like Matt Ryan a lot, what he's done this year, but I think the Broncos' defense is amazing, and I think they'll do enough to stop the Falcons. And I, I'm not sure if they have Paxton Lynch or Trevor Simeon starting this week, but either way, they both have looked very solid this year in the limited action we've seen them in, so I think they'll be able to do enough to get them the win. This is going to be another good game, I think. I agree. But I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons in this game. Have I think fun. Matt Ryan is going to keep it up. I think he's going to throw a couple of touchdowns. I don't think he's going to – he's not going to have nearly the same game he had last week. But he's going to ha play like he has been this uh, great start to the season. I think he's going to limit the turnovers. I think he only had one last week. I mean, it was returned for six. But he's going to limit the turnovers. And I think the Falcons, just with Julio Jones, their offense is going to be tough to beat. I understand the Broncos have arguably the best defense in the league up there with Seattle. But with the way Matt Ryan's been playing, I, I can't see him falling apart at this yeah, point. Yeah, you know, he's had eight seasons in the NFL. The other seven, he wasn't good enough <sighs> to... He like was a he was a great quarterback in 2012. I don't think he would have beaten the Broncos defense. Broncos are one of the, I would say the second best defense in the NFL following the Vikings. So I do not think Matt Ryan can handle it as I think anyone watching this would know, and it should be an easy win for the Broncos. Definitely a game that we're going to be reviewing next week for uh, sure, one way or another. Yeah, and then uh, we got the uh, Bengals and the Cowboys uh, facing off. Cowboys off to an impressive start this season. Uh, I'm going to have to give it to the Cowboys. I really like what we've seen from Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, the two rookies. Without Dez, it's going to be interesting to see what Dak Prescott can do. I hope. I don't know why I hope. I don't really want the, the, the Cowboys to win. I'm a Redskins fan. But I, I like seeing Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott su see, succeed. It's interesting because Tony Romo, if, if, I think if Elliott, no, why Elliott? I think if Prescott succeeds this week, it's going to be a big development in the storyline between whether Romo or Prescott should start. I went with the Cowboys, too. Um, I really like what they've been doing offensively. I think Prescott has impressed me a ton, and obviously Zeke has looked great, like I said before. And the Bengals are a good team, don't get me wrong, but they were at home against the Dolphins on Thursday night, and they beat them pretty easily. They really dominated the game, but it just didn't look that impressive. I mean... They didn't show me a whole lot. They should have wiped the floor with them. I think if Dallas can find a way to just limit A.J. Green, they're going to win this game. Uh, I originally was thinking about taking Cincinnati because usually in the past couple of seasons when I've looked at the Cowboys and I've seen games where they play uh, teams that are usually double-digit winners, I think, oh, it's the Cowboys. They're not going to win. But this season is different. you got great young talent in Dak Prescott. you got Ezekiel Elliott. I'm finding it hard to pick against the uh, Cowboys in this game, so I'm going to go with them. Uh, we have the Bills and the Rams, and it doesn't sound like an interesting game, but the Bills coming off a big win last week, and so were the so did the Rams actually. Bills, Bills, Bills. Uh, I don't like Tyrod Taylor, but I do like Lashawn McCoy, and I like oh, Sammy Watkins isn't playing. I don't know what I was about to say. <laughs> Lashawn McCoy he probably rushed for a good amount of yards against the Rams. Uh, they just beat the Patriots 16 nothing, so I, I think they can beat the Rams. I think anytime you beat the Patriots, regardless of who's at quarterback, it's impressive and it's something to be proud of. So I think I'm, go I'm definitely going with the Bills this week. I think Shady McCoy is one of the best running backs in the league, very underrated since he left Philly. And uh, I think Tyrod Taylor is a decent quarterback, and they'll be plenty good enough to get this one. I'm going with the Bills. Um, coming off a big win, you know, shutting out the Patriots is no easy task. And if you're watching this, Jeff Fisher, please start Jared Goff. He is watching this, by the like, way. You, you just need to do it. I know you're out it. there, Jeff. 
Yeah. I love Jeff Fisher. Like, like you, you've been empl employing this like idea that you you don't like being known as an eight and eight or a seven and nine coach. Well, you're gonna keep being like that if you don't start Jared Goff, your number one overall draft pick. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff, put in the time to make a good decision like you put into your hair because your facial hair and your actual <laughs> hair is awesome. <laughs> Put in the time, Jeff. You're a great you coach. You heard it here, folks. That's how you judge NFL coaches. Uh, we're going to look at the Sunday night game where the Giants head to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers. Coming off a tough loss to a very good team. Uh, Matt, who do you have in that game? I have Green Bay. Uh, I think I picked the Giants last week, and although in hindsight that probably wasn't a great pick. Terrible pick. Okay, thanks for that. Um, they didn't really even look decent. I mean, they're struggling with Odell, which I think is huge. If he's not going, then it's a lot harder for that offense to do anything. So I think Rodgers puts up some good numbers, and I think the defense does enough to beat the Giants. Packer Nation, man. You know, how could you not want the Packers to win this game? I mean, I know a lot of Giants fans don't want that to happen. I don't know. Just a I'm, lot, not a lot. I don't know where I'm going Someone with this, but lose. I think the Packers are going to win by a lot. Uh, I like Aaron Rodgers. I like Jordy Nelson. I like Randall Cobb on Thursdays and I mean today's Thursday that's why I'm saying that and I like Eddie Lacy when he really gets going yeah I'm going with the Packers I mean I, I want obviously I want the Giants to win but after dropping two straight games uh, one that they should have won and one that I, I, I think going into the season you'd expect them to win but the Vikings obviously playing extreme extremely well football uh, if Trevin Wade is at corner again this week starting at corner it's gonna be an un unmitigated disaster uh, with Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb as your top two wide receivers. Uh, then, of course, you got Odell not performing and also not being focused on the field. i got to go with Green Bay in this game. It's, hard, it's always hard to pick against Aaron Rodgers. Uh, now we head to the Monday night game, final game of the week. Uh, Tampa Bay taking on the Carolina Panthers. Matt, do the Panthers turn it around this week? I say yes. I think that the Bucks defense is nothing special. And obviously we've seen that the Panthers defense is not nearly what they were last year. But... I think it's going to be an offensive shootout, and I find it tough to pick against Cam Newton and Kelvin Benjamin in a big high-scoring game like this. It's really tough to pick against Ron Rivera, but the fact that Cam Newton might not play, I that have, is true. I that have is true. to give the game to Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston, he, he's had an odd start to the season. He's done well, but he's thrown a lot of picks. So, so I don't know. Maybe this week we'll see if he can really – what Jameis Winston is, because it's just like a big question mark. He's, he's good. He's not good. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of receivers. He has Mike Evans, who's great. Uh, last week, the uh, Falcons played them with Julio Jones, who's a great receiver. They weren't able to stop Jones, so I don't know if he'll be able to stop Mike Evans, great receiver. Yeah, you, uh, you beat me to it. I think that Mike Evans poised for a big game this week. The way the Panthers' defense has been playing so poorly. I'm going to go with the Bucks in this game. I think if we could be seeing that good game from Jameis Winston we see every, like, three games. Uh, also, question marks the quarterback for the Panthers, and they just kind of look lost as a team. They don't look like the same team they were last year. All right, we head to the final topic today. The NBA is about to get started. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, with the biggest acquisition last, uh, this offseason, on the 4th of July, they signed Kevin Durant, and that gives them a starting five. That includes Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green, and that is just downright scary. How many wins do you think they will have this season? I'm giving them 70 wins. I think they might struggle a little bit in the beginning, as a lot of these sort of super teams do. Struggle to find their footing just a little bit, might drop a few games here and there, but I think at the end of the day, this is one of the most talented rosters we've seen in a long time, maybe ever, honestly, and I think that they're going to dominate the NBA. Yep, they'll get 70 wins. It'll be the most boring 70 wins in the season. They'll just destroy teams in those 70 games because they have Steph Curry and Kevin Garnett, who... Kevin Durant. Kevin Garnett is <laughs> wow, retired. That was bad. Not the same person. They are not the same person, folks. Kevin Durant, going from the Thunder. He's good. Steph Curry's good. Klay Thompson's good. They're all good. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 71 wins. Uh, I more or less the same thing, just an extra game. But uh, I think there could be some struggles with chemistry. But other than that, there's no reason why they shouldn't win 70 games. Anything under 70 games or 70 wins should be a disappointment to this team, especially a team that probably should have won the uh, NBA Finals last year, even without, even without Kevin Durant. Cavs Nation, man. 
Yeah, the Cavs playing, obviously, with a great comeback in that series. But it sh I think it should have been put away at three games to one. I agree. Uh, and then one more topic here in the NBA. The Boston Celtics uh, just had their first preseason game the other night. Uh, where do you think they will finish in the Eastern Conference? I have them at second in the Eastern Conference. Uh, the Raptors had that spot last year, but I think that the Celtics picking up Al Horford and drafting Jalen Brown is enough to put them over that hump. I still don't see them coming even really close to Cleveland. I think that the Celtics will make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe take a game or two from Cleveland, but at the end of the day, Cleveland's a top dog in the East. Yeah, I think Cleveland runs away with the conference. I really like Kyrie Irving's Le Irvings. Kyrie Irving and LeBron James, uh, but I do see the Celtics coming in second. I uh, like Horford, who's good with Atlanta, and uh, Jalen Brown's an interesting pick. Uh, Isaiah Thomas is a great little point guard, so. Uh, I'm going. Yeah. I'm obviously also going with a second uh, spot in the conference. Uh, the real question mark, I think, is if they could compete in Cleveland in a series, is how Jalen Brown's going to play. No one really knows exactly. I mean, a lot of people were shocked that they took him with the third pick. Uh, they some thought that they were going to trade. Others thought they'd take someone like Chris Dunn. Uh, but if he's the guy that just come, bursts onto the scene, you got Ben Simmons with a broken foot. Uh, Brandon Ingram's probably assumed to be maybe like the best the rookie of the year candidate at this point. With, but I mean Simmons could still win it, but he's going to miss a lot of time. Uh, if Jalen Brown's the guy who ends up being the rookie of the year, then I think the Celtics could be able to maybe win a uh, series in seven against Cleveland. Uh, and then of course Al Horford, big acquisition. Uh, he plays the way that he played in Atlanta. It should be it would be a very fun series to watch between the Cavs and the Celtics. Well, that's all the time we have here today. Uh, I'm Colin Casey, once again joined by Patrick Farview and Matt Rudolakis. Thanks for joining us here on Spartan Center. We'll see you next week.